Welcome back everyone to another video and in today's episode we shall be talking about widgets. So basically widgets are things that you can display on your screen which would contain maybe your inventories, all kinds of menus that you might have and all kinds of uh, interesting stuff. So in my case here is some of the things that I've added to my widget. So I have a icon at the top right, I have some scroll boxes, vertical one over here on the left and a horizontal one on the right. Also you have all kinds of buttons that can change color depending on whether you hover or click them. Uh, also we have a slider bars where we could select all kinds of values. And basically all of this can be modified to whatever colors, whatever shapes, sizes, basically anything could be modified. But since I'm very bad with designing, so uh, yeah, my widgets look a little funny. So first, uh, let's create ourselves our first widget. So what you want to do is right click in the content browser, go to the user interface and at the bottom you have widget blueprint. I'm going to call mine UI HUD. So let's open this up and basically this, uh, if you select it, this turns green by default. If you just hover over it, it is blue. This is our canvas panel, which will basically is our display. So on the left side at the top on the palette, we can find all kinds of things that we could add to our screens. Uh, here are many, many different options. Obviously, I'm not going to go through all of them because there's just simply way too many options that you could have. Uh, here at the bottom, we have a hierarchy which basically contains the things that you have added to your widget. And obviously when you select any of your things, just like always on the right side by default, you have all kinds of parameters that you can change for that specific object. Now widget blueprints basically consist of two things. We have a designer where you can see the thing that you are actually going to be displaying on the screen. So basically the visual part of it. And you also have a graph side where we can do all kinds of logics to calculate things where we could maybe add things during the gameplay. And yeah, basically do all kinds of uh, logic mathematic things over here. So first let's go to our designer and actually let's add something. So for example, usually games what could have is maybe like a health bar. So for that, usually you will want to use a progress bar. Drag that into your canvas panel and here it is. So now we can adjust the sizing of this. Also we can change the sizes over here manually. So let's say I want mine to be like 600 by 40 units. Now let's adjust this to be 40, 40 from both of the sides. Now one thing that is really important is to anchor these objects correctly so that they would actually be anchored to the side of the screen in which they are living because that way they will always follow that one corner and if the resolution changes, it will not distort the widgets as bad. So uh, if you would select your object and then in the details panel, you have the anchors. So in my case, I have my progress bar on the left top corner. You want to anchor this then to the top left. Now, if your widget is in a different position, make sure you select one of those positions. Uh, also, you can select that it's maybe like a full size right from the top till down widget or maybe right to left in the top or bottom or maybe the full size full screen widget. Uh, so make sure you anchor it to that correct location. Yeah, otherwise, if you change re resolutions, uh, some issues might occur. So now let's say this is a health bar. So what I will probably want to do is here in the progress in the percent, uh, we want to add some percentage so that we can actually see this bar. So I'm going to set mine to be like 0.7. This only accepts values 0 to 1. Uh, so when you if you are creating a binding for this, if this is like your health bar, what you want to do is you want to divide your current health with the max health and that is basically going to return you a number between 0 and 1. And if you want to know more, make sure to check out my other tutorials where I'm actually creating the health, stamina, thirst and all kinds of systems. So uh, real quick, let's just simply change the tint of this. So we have, let's have like a light, light red background on this one. And then let's change the, uh, let's see the fill color of this to be dark gray, dark red since this is like a health bar. So we're going to have one widget over here, which is going to be our health bar. And for now, well, let's let's leave it be and let's actually try to display this on our screens. So what you want to do is go to your third person character and let's say so since this is like a HUD, which would probably be displayed constantly on our screens, uh, what you want to do is then I'm going to do a begin play event. So whenever we begin the game, what we want to do is we want to create a widget. And now let's select our UI HUD. So basically this thing right here, uh, but that's not it. So uh, with this create widget, we are just simply creating this, but we are not displaying it. So from the return value, you want to add to viewport. 
and this basically is going to add this widget to our screens. So now if we press play, you can see our health bar is at the top left corner and yeah, it's working the way it should. Now let's say we want to add some more things to this. Uh, for example, we want to have something that we can interact with. Uh, we might want to have like a button to this. So we can do that, add a button again, make sure to anchor this to the correct position. And um, let's say we have different widgets that we want to add to this. Maybe during the gameplay, maybe we're picking up an item. So we need to add that item to the slot, uh, at least its visual part to, to the inventory panel or whatnot. So what you want to do is again, create that widget that you will want to add to your screens. And I'm going to call this add widget ui add widget and what i'm going to do over here since i know this isn't going to be like a full screen widget this is just going to be like a child one of the objects that is going to live inside of a full screen widget what i usually want to start with is a size box or a border something that is going to basically wrap this whole thing uh, there's many options you can use horizontal vertical boxes uh, just simply look around so here are some common ones that uh, are getting used very often uh, some panels so you have the overlay boxes where you can overlay many objects over each other vertical wrap boxes all kinds of things over here but i'm going to use border for this and what i'm going to do is right click my canvas panel and i'm going to replace it with a child like this so now this automatically creates as a full screen widget so now if we would add this to our viewports this would take the entire screen in our case, we are going to limit this so it's not a full screen widget. But what I want to do beforehand is change its color a little bit uh, so that we would actually be able to see this. So the content doesn't really matter. It can be anything in this case. I'm just showing you an example how we could now add this widget to an existing one. So now in our UI HUD, we have two options. Now, if we know that this widget is going to be here right off the bat and we don't even need any calculations or launch events for this what we can do is just simply in our palette since we have created this new widget we can just look for it so we can type in ui add widget and we can just drag it in and here you go we have exactly the same widget so now if we would add maybe a text field to this like so let's make this into the center of our screens uh, maybe change the text color to black so that we can actually see it better on this background so now you can see here we go we have our text block orange widget right here so now we can place it wherever we want to place it anchor this to the correct corner and there we go we have our widget on our screens now let's say we want to click this button right here and only then add this widget to our screens so what you want to do is instead of adding the actual widget itself first you want to create a location for that so i'm going to again add a border Obviously, you can use scroll boxes, vertical boxes, horizontal boxes, all kinds of boxes for this. Since I know I'm just going to have one object, border is going to work just fine for this. So I'm going to align this like so, anchor this correctly, and I'm going to make sure that in the brush settings, in the brush color, I remove the opacity so that it is transparent by default, so that by default we are not able to see anything in that location. Now, one thing to keep in mind of is if you are adding just one object to this box, it is okay to use the border. Now, if you want to add multiple entries to this, then border is not going to work for you. Then you want to use vertical, horizontal or any other boxes. Uh, what you want to do is whenever you are looking for an object in the palette, maybe hover over this for a second, wait a bit and it's going to give you this white tooltip and it's going to say how many children it can have as you can see here in the border it says single child so that means that this object will accept only one child so if we would look for perhaps a horizontal box you can see this says many children so that means we can basically add as many as we like to this so depending on what exactly you need you might have to use some different borders or uh, boxes in this case so um, we have the border that we are going to add a widget to uh, the same principle will apply for horizontal boxes as well what you want to do first is make sure that you set this object to be is variable so that it is accessible in our graphs here we go now buttons by default are already variables so you don't have to worry about that so i'm going to click this button and then it's going to create us a widget over here so now since this border is a variable we can also rename it let's call this new widget location let's go to the graph now and you can see we have 
this new widget location as a variable. Now here we have our button and we want to add a on click event on this button. So whenever we click this button, it will add us, add us a widget in that border. So what I'm going to do is on clicked, we're going to create a widget and we are going to create our UI add widget like so. Then instead of adding this to the view of port, because we don't want to add this to the view of port, instead we want to add this to this border. I'm going to drag in our border, so our new widget location, and from it we can then add a child to this border. So let's connect the execution and for the content we need to use our return value from our create widget. So now whenever we are going to click a button, we are going to create this widget and add it to the new widget locations border. So now, so far so good. Technically everything should be working, uh, but we're going to have some small issues, but we can still test this out. So let's press play and as you can see, our widget is already on the screen, so we can see our text block, our button, and the other widget is invisible. Now, we can't access the mouse, we could maybe click like a Windows key and then it's going to give us the, the button. But what we can do instead is use a Shift F1 combo and this brings us our mouse up. So now, we can click on this button and boom, you can see it created us this widget. Now, if we click this more, nothing happens because the border is only accepting only one child. Now, if we would maybe replace this, so if we can, we can right click this, replace this with a horizontal box. Now, make sure you reselect this. If you, re if you change its type, then make sure you reselect this and make this into a variable once more. Otherwise, this isn't going to work. Now, one more issue that we will have is that in this case, you can see this one, if we hover over this, it says that it, this is a horizontal box, but this one still says that it is a border reference. So what you want to do is actually delete this part, bring in the new variable, and then add child. And now you will see that this says add child to horizontal box instead. So that is better, it is better to use that one instead. So now if we would try this again, with a horizontal box, shift F1, click this, there we go, we have one, click once more, we have another one, another one, and now it's going to add as many as we want it to add to our horizontal box. So if you have many of these, you probably would want to use scroll box instead, and that is, I think, can we replace this? Yeah, we can replace this with a scroll box, so you can use that one as well, overlay, to make widgets overlay each other, and there's loads and loads of options that you could find in the palette. But well, obviously, you will not want your players to have to click Shift F1 all the time in order to bring up the mouse whenever you want to click something or interact with the widgets. You probably want to have it whenever you are displaying this widget on the screen. So uh, let's change this up a little bit. So let's go to our character. We have the begin play event where we are adding the widget to our screen. Uh, I'm going to remove this begin play because, well, Probably with the HUD, if you have the health bar, you don't want to interact with it. So that should be created on begin play and live there pretty much constantly. Uh, but well, if you have some interactable widgets, you want to display those maybe on some, on some kind of a button click. So what I'm going to do is create a keyboard key to event because well, one is already taken for the one that I previewed. Uh, so what we are going to do over here is create this widget. And then once we have created this widget, what, what we want to do is actually promote this to a variable. So I'm going to call this UI HUD. Now we want to promote this to a variable because we are going to need to check all kinds of conditions for this. So make sure maybe to reconnect the target. It doesn't really matter. Technically, it could be connected from over here because this return value and this variable is exactly the same thing. But well, I prefer to do it like so. It's a little bit better. Uh, it's a little bit better for the visuals. Now we need this variable so that we can check all kinds of conditions during whenever we are trying to display this or remove this from our screens. So what we want to do is whenever we click this button, we want to bring in our variable. And the first thing that we want to check is, is this thing actually valid? So is valid with a question mark? So whether this thing has been actually created. Now, if it hasn't, if it's not valid, then we want to create our widget and continue with the code that we have over here. Now, if this thing is valid, then we want to do a branch if check. And what we want to check for is that this UI HUD is visible. 
So basically whether this thing is actually on our screens and that will be our condition. If it's not on our screens, then we want to create it, promote it to a variable and add it to our view of port. But if this is true, if this is already visible, then we'll probably, if we are cl click clicking this button for the second time, we probably want to remove it then. So I'm going to bring in our UI HUD and then we can remove, remove from parent. So now this is going to remove this widget from our screens. Now, the next thing that we probably want to do is create ourselves a mouse to display it on the screen and create a focus on this widget so that the mouse would focus on the widget rather than the game. So what we want to do is from the widgets reference, so from the set value right here, what I'm going to do is get owning player and that is going to return us our controller. And then from our controller, we can set show mouse cursor. And now if we set this boolean to be true, this is now going to display us our mouse. But also we want to now focus on this widget rather than the game. So again, from the controller, we want to set input mode. Uh, it depends. You could set UI only or game and UI. I prefer using game and UI. Um, that is because if you just focus on the only on the widget, then that means that this keyboard 2 event is not going to work because then inside of your widget itself you want to create like a button or something that allows you to close this widget um, yeah otherwise otherwise if you just fo focus only on the ui it's going to disable these inputs that we have in our character that's why i'm going to use the mode game and ui and the in widget to focus should be our ui hot because we want to focus on this specific widget we want to make sure that our controller is focusing our hud now we got to bring these settings back uh, to default whenever we are removing this widget. So I'm going to bring this back a little bit. I'm going to bring in another UI HUD reference and again get the owning player for this widget. And then we can set show mouse cursor and we can set this value back to false whenever we are removing the widget from our screens. And also from the controller we can set input set input mode game only so that we would focus back on the game and then we can remove the widget from our screens like so so now with this code right here we are basically going to create a widget on the first click and on the second click we are going to remove this from our screens so let's give it a go so now if we press play and if we press keyboard key 2 there we go we are focusing on the widget we are moving the mouse around our character is not moving if we click and hold then it is looking around we can also run around uh, that you have to disable uh, the movements if the widget is visible by default though that logic doesn't exist in this project well, let's try to click on the button and there we go we are adding our widgets just like we did before and with the second click we are removing the widget from our screens and as you can see if we re-enable this widget it is removing the widgets that get, got added because by default there is no widgets in this bottom right corner we are just simply adding those whenever we click this button and each time we reset this uh, these widgets are getting removed so if you want to display those widgets constantly then probably you want to add them instead of instead of adding them on click you will probably want to add them on event construct and the event construct is the same thing as begin play in the uh, in basically any other blueprint so those are the very very basics for how to set up your first widgets uh, some basic controls so you can actually toggle this on and off how to add existing widgets already so you can combine multiple widgets and well as you saw in the preview there's all kinds of possibilities and basically everything is possible it just mostly depends on understanding how these tools work and your imagination so thank you for watching hope you learned something new join my discord and i see you in the next one